Judicial Service Commission, yesterday nominated Lady Justice Martha Kome as the next Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, which means the name of Lady Justice Martha Kome will be submitted to President Uhuru Mwe Kenyatta, who shall then transmit it to Parliament for voting. And Article 166 of our Constitution is very clear on the nomination or on the appointment of the Chief Justice, the Deputy Chief Justice, and other judges. It says, number one, the President shall appoint a the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice in accordance with the recommendations of the Judicial Service Commission and subject to the approval of the National Assembly and be all judges in accordance with the recommendations of the Judicial Service Commissions. Which means the only thing now standing between Lady Justice uh, Martha Kome and being the Chief Justice is Parliament. And I'm certain Parliament is going to approve the name. And that article 166 then goes further at number three to explain the qualifications of the Chief Justice and other judges of the Supreme Court. I don't want to get into all those for now. But in my considered opinion, I think the move by the Judicial Service Commission to nominate Martha Kome as the next Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya is significant politically speaking. It is significant because for the first time we are going to have gamma capture or the Mount Kenya capturing all arms of government. We have three arms of government. We have the executive, we have the judiciary, and we have parliament. President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta, who is a Kikuyu, is leading the executive. Lady Justice Martha Komi is not going to lead the judiciary. She comes from Meru, still Mount Kenya. Parliament is led by the Speaker of the National Assembly, Justin Muturi. Justin Muturi comes from Embo, or is it Mbere? So basically the three arms of government for the first time is now under the grip of the Mount Kenya region. And someone was joking to me that the deep state deliberately left out William Uko because there is no way Uko could have replaced Justice Maraga, Chief, former Chief Justice Maraga, when Raila Odinga is going to become the next president of the Republic of Kenya. He was just joking. But now let us look at the judiciary because we are agreeing, we are in agreement that the executive the judiciary and parliament are now led by people from a region. Now let us look at the judiciary, the leadership there. At the judiciary, we have the chief justice now, who is Martha Komi, who is Amiru. Then the deputy chief justice is going to be Philomena Muilo, who is already in office. She is a camper. Then we have the president, court of appeal, William Woko. William Uko is a law. Then we have the chief registrar, Anne Amadi. Anne Amadi is a law. And then we have principal judge, High Court of Kenya, Lydia Achode. Achode, I think she's a lawyer, those bordering the laws. So basically the judiciary is not under capture. And Martha Kome is highly qualified. In fact, if you followed the interviews, it was clear that if it was not going to be Martha Kome, it was going to be William Ooko. And if it was not going to be William Ooko, then it was going to be Nderi. And if it was not going to be Nderi, then it was going to be Fred Ngatia, who was actually the favorite because most Kenyans believed that Fred Ngatia was the deep state's candidate. And Martha Kome, apart from being highly qualified, is one of the women who emerged during the golden era, being the, during the era of Ngilu, during the era of uh, Nancy Baraza, during the era of uh, Martha Karua, 
and even during the era of Njoki Ndum. So she's highly qualified. But politically, her appointment can be viewed from several lenses. And in my considered opinion, I think she was appointed because of several reasons. The first reason why I think she was appointed was as a result of her role in 2017 general election. For those who followed the interview, it was revisited. And apart from that, President Uru Mwage Kenyatta was very clear that he was going to revisit the Supreme Court judgment ruling. The Supreme Court judgment. And of course, we are aware that by the time Maraga was uh, leaving office, the president had started re re revisiting. Even Philomena Mwilu is under a lot of pressure because she's being revisited. But for Martha Kome, she played a part, she played a role. It reached a point when uh, Judge Odunga ruled that the IBC moved to appoint the preceding officers were illegal. And then the next day was going to be an election. So the deep state reached out to several judges, to some three judges to sit. And one of the judges was actually Martha Kome. So I think because of the role she played, Martha Kome has been rewarded. I wanted to listen to Martha Kome trying so hard to explain her role during the last election. Before that election was a public holiday, I was called by the registrar, Mr. Selem, and I believe you have asked him questions here when you are determining the dispute, and told that the president has said, as uh, certified a matter urgent, and has sent the bench comprising of Justice Givenji, Sishare, and Kome, years the urgent application. You as a member of that bench, did you, for example, ask where is counsel for the other party? We did ask, but we were told, and the counsel argued, the matter is very urgent. There is no time to serve because the elections are taking place the next day. I knew when we are dealing with the presidential disputes, everything is urgent. You saw the Supreme sitting through midnight. Did the bench establish whether or not the CJ had authorized a sitting outside hours? So if the president of the court has uh, empaneled a bench and he has uh, drawn a course list asking that I come and sit, it would have been in subordination on my part to say I will not come to court. Who authorizes the court to sit after hours in the judiciary? Well, it is the presiding judge, I mean the president of the court, under the uh, Court of Appeal Administration Act. The Constitution does not provide if the repeat election does not happen, what happens? Number two, I think if you look at all those people who applied, there were three strong candidates. Fred Ngatia, there was William Muko, and there was Martha Kome. You can argue that Fred Ngatia and uh, William Muko became victims because appointing Fred Ngatia and Living Muko was going to raise a lot of issues. If anything, Fred Ngatia is a Kikuyu, and already we have Njokin Dungu inside there. And appointing Muko was also going to be a bit difficult. Assuming the deep state is, is thinking of making Relo Dinga the next president of the Republic of Kenya. So the easiest route was to appoint someone else. And what a better choice for the system than Martha Kome. Martha Kome is persistent. The system tested her and realized that she could actually leave her house at night go and, and uh, perceptionally listen to a case and make judgment. So the system identified her as someone who can play balls. 
And there's something which is going to happen in this country. And I want you guys to monitor it very closely. Justice David Maraga gave an advisory opinion about parliament and declared the current parliament unconstitutional because, because of the gender issues. President Ruru Kenyatta was expected to dissolve parliament. But up to now, the president has not dissolved parliament. Why do you think the president has not dissolved parliament? I know the president and his team are working so hard to seek legal opinion on whether dissolving the parliament is going to affect the term of the president in office. So they need a friendly judge, a friendly chief justice. A chief justice who had worked or who can work with the system. And you may consider the opinion that is why Martha Kome fits the bill. Number three, I also believe that Martha Kome was also appointed to appeal to the women of the Republic of Kenya. Today, all women, including slave queens, were busy celebrating the appointment or the nomination of Martha Kome. But unknown to them, that was a strategy. It was a strategy to bypass the tribal dominance. And let me use the example for example, of the example of uh, William Ruto. William Ruto realized that Kenyans were tired with the Kikuyu presidency, going to Kalenjin presidency, then from Kalenjin, Ikuyu, Ikuyu, then Ruto is now front runner, another Kalenjin. So to bypass that tribal dominance, William Ruto came up with the hustler narrative. So the, uh, the hustler narrative day is being sold as a hustler narrative, not William Ruto is now not selling himself as a Kalenjin. So he's able to reach out to other tribes in the name of the Hasla nation. So basically, this is what these guys are, realize, are doing. They realize that Fred Ngata was a Kikuyu, Martha Koma is a male. So it was going to be very difficult to choose another Kikuyu. So the best thing was to identify a lady, Kikuyu lady. So once she was appointed, Kenyans were very happy that for the first time we are going to have a woman as the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya. And lastly is the BBI process. Let's face it, the Building Bridges Initiative process is something which is going to face a lot of legal challenges. President Uru Kenyatta and Rela Morodinga are keen on this process. But legal battles are being arranged on the path at every given stage. As of today, we have over, I think, over 11 cases against the Building Bridges Initiative process. Some of these cases might go up to Supreme Court because you appeal, they appeal, you appeal, you appeal until Supreme Court. At the Supreme Court, this is where the final decision is likely to be made. What a better way of reaching out to Martha Kome. Martha Kome is a non-reformist in this country. She fought for reforms during her time. And therefore, being also pro-system, she's likely to help the Building Bridges Initiative process. I don't know what you think, but that's my take. And I want to ask you a simple question. Do you think Lady Justice Martha Kome is going to perform better than David Maraga. I just want to ask you that question as I leave. And for those who are watching this channel for the first time, the best thing you can do is just to click subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. What we do on this channel is simple. We analyze politics in a way you can't find any other place. So the best thing, just click the subscribe button. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your support. It has been amazing. But I want you guys to start giving these videos thumbs up. Thank you guys. And please, may you have a good day. And by the way, I'd want you to suggest for me a topic which we need to dissect. So in the comment section, 
just give me a suggestion of the next video you'd want me to work on to work on thank you guys and by the way philip ochen the author the columnist with the daily nation passed on at his residence in Awendo earlier yesterday i mean late yesterday so i want to take this opportunity on my own behalf on behalf of the membership of this channel to send my condolence messages to the family during this trying moment thank you guys and please may you have a good day